Hey folks, and welcome to another Factorial Friday Facts. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And this one is number 390, Noise Expression 2.0. Uh, this Friday Facts pretty much uh, entirely consists of talk and uh, explanation of map generation and how they go about that and some improvements and changes that they've made with this and uh, you know possibilities it allows for the future. Now, a lot of this is actually super technical, uh, so I'm going to do mostly entirely summarization of this. We'll do a little bit of reading, and then there is a whole section I'm pretty much just not going to even cover, uh, which sounds really bad <laughs> when I say that, but uh, it's, it's just so, so technical that even like with a summarization of it, uh, it it would still, it's still like so over my head, I can't even begin to discuss it. Uh, but if that is your thing, you can of course hop in and, and read that part or the whole thing yourself. Uh, but we're going to start out here uh, with this part by Arendelle. Uh, so what are noise expressions? So essentially, as an introduction here, map generation in Factorio involves deciding the placement of tiles, trees, rocks, resources, and more using X and Y coordinates, as you can see here. So they take X and Y, and this kind of determines the generation of all these things that make up the map. The challenge is to convert X and Y into the appropriate tiles and entities requiring code to bring assets together. Uh, so utilizing X and Y, we come down here, uh, using the X and Y coordinates, the distance from the origin is calculated to create a circular island, ensuring the starting position is on land, because obviously you don't want to spawn on water, which was actually, used, it, at one point was an issue very rarely where you would just spawn in the middle of water, <laughs> but they did fix that quite a long time ago. Uh, and then they use uh, offset cones uh, achieved by adding values to X and Y, which allow the creation of new islands, sections, or alterations to existing ones. You can kind of uh, see down here. Now there's, again, a bunch of these uh, pictures. So origin, you know, we talked about the island here, and then you can see elevation equals 100 distance here, and then it can help to think in 3D to see the resulting cone, essentially. Uh, so we just went through that, and then they say we also have most of the arithmetic operators like absolute value, uh, modulo exponents, and trigonometry functions that uh, tri trigonometric functions can be used to uh, rotate positions instead of just using offsets, and that's the main trick to the starting area of Vulcanus. So yeah, you can see here they, they went over this in the other planet in the other Friday facts where they showcase Vulcanus, but this is how they actually kind of go about. Uh, generating this and you can see you know you could use some things you know chain things together like they show here for example uh, test one equals a plus b times c but we can also make one noise expression reference the output of another uh, test doubler equals the, like I, I, I've already lost to be honest with you but <laughs> basically you can make really fancy cool things like this may not be super useful, but uh, you know, there are maybe some map scenarios or, or special scenarios that people make that, that would utilize this. But basically the noise part, which is like the whole thing behind this. Uh, so there's a, a few types of noise. So essentially when making random numbers, the most biggest step is to generate completely random numbers every time you need one. This is called incoherent noise. And uh, no point has any relation to any other point, right? However, coherent noise is different. So basically, uh, co it's different. It makes good use of the X and Y coordinates so that nearby positions can have similar values. This means that as you move over the landscape, things change smoothly and coherently. Uh, fractal noise, which is a another one, combines multiple levels of noise with varying feature sizes to generate continents, islands, and detailed coastlines, as you can uh, see here. So uh, this is, well, I mean, this is kind of like a, I guess maybe like a behind the scenes type of thing, but then this is maybe like what it would turn out as. Uh, spot noise creates spots in landscape used for resource placement with each spot acting as a cone to allow variations in richness. Uh, and then you can see here. So basically on the left here is well, uh, novice resource cones before the added noise to break up the circle. And then this is what the map would look like normally. And you can see the cones, uh, the spots there do correspond with the resources. And then it's time to put it all together. 
So the real power comes from artistic control over these things and finding the mass required to do it efficiently. Here's a couple examples. So spot noise is not just for resources, it can also be used for volcanoes. So this is gonna how they create like the volcanoes and lava pits on Vulcanus. Uh, they add huge spot cones to the elevation to make the main volcano body. We can also invert the cone and uh, min the tip to invert the mountain peak for a lava pit, as you can see here. Uh, these sort of inversions are critical for some things. If you want to have a mostly water map, you can just reduce the elevation, but this will tend to make islands. What if you want a mostly water map, but still have most of the land connected? Uh, another example for, for that is that they can use absolute value and bounce any negative value to be positive. Uh, if we then invert it, all the values are negative, but a small addition bumps a narrow band into the, <clears throat> excuse me, positive region. This makes a series of narrow land paths that almost always connect. You can kind of see a example of that there. Okay, so then we go to noise tools. So noise tools developed for map generation offer auto place cleaning, planet switching presets, debug sliders, and noise visualization. Uh, essentially, you can, so uh, noise visualization allows developers to see the distribution and output values of expressions aiding and debugging and adjustments, and then the tools are essential for working on multiple biomes, providing insights into the rate of change and gradients, uh, which is kind of just like, this is again by Arendelle, but this is kind of just a summarization of that, but we'll just go through this a little more. So uh, before joining uh, Woob, uh, Arendelle was working on new plans for space exploration mod, and still is. In space exploration, each planet type will have unique map generation, a bit like the planets in space age. Making just one completely new planet is a huge amount of work, so when embarking on making 14 plus new ones, I decided to invest in making some new tools to make the process easier. This was sold in my own set of noise tools that do a number of things, uh, which is basically kind of what we just summarized a second ago. And he mentions the last one about noise visualization is the one that is really difficult to do without. Without it, you are very detached from the output of the system. <laughs> So let's say, for example, you add some new code that is supposed to make some of the existing sand on the map go from a yellow version to a red version. You load up the game, wander around, and you don't see any red sand. What went wrong? It could be any number of things. Maybe it is actually working, but coincidentally, the areas that should be red happen to be underwater in grass instead of sand. More likely, though, if you explored a large area and still didn't find any, then it's broken somewhere, but where? So the noise visualization basically uh, lets you choose a specific noise expression and convert that to an image in the preview screen. That way you can see things like the distribution and output values of expressions to say things like the scale is way larger than I thought, so you need uh, to go 10 kilometers to find any uh, difference, or the output range is too low and it's never strong enough to make any change, or maybe one value accidentally goes negative, uh, etc. So you can see here that on the left is uh, novice map as you normally see it, but the right is novice elevation. Blue is elevation below zero with darker values being deeper. Yellow is high, green is very high, used for water and cliffs. So this way you can just kind of uh, narrow down where things are generating, how they're generating, uh, what may be going wrong, rather than just looking at this and trying to figure it out, right? And you can see it very much corresponds. So uh, the blue is obviously water there, and then uh, the green, uh, is over here where there's like a bunch of cliffs and stuff, which is like raised up ish. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see here, this really shines working on things like multiple biomes. Uh, again, you can see the left here, this is for Vulcanus. Uh, blue is elevation below zero with darker values being deeper. Yellow is high, green is very high. And then you can see over here, uh, the right, the Vulcanus temperature, black is cool, red is warm, yellow is hot, you used to place hot tile sets, uh, which is super cool too. So this just makes like the whole process of generating biomes and planets so much easier and, and, and you know, easier to debug and stuff if something's go, going wrong. Uh, and then he goes on to say that naturally, when I started making planets at Oop, I updated my tools so I could use them for space age. I'm pretty confident in saying that with these tools, I can work on planets about 10 times faster, which is a huge improvement. Not only that, but uh, Genis, Genis, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very bad with names in general. Um, I probably said this wrong, but, uh, and Arendelle have been working on some fancy 
a new noise function that we'll reveal along with a new planet later. Uh, later being another Friday fact, so I don't reveal it in this one. Uh, the new functions have a lot of settings and uh, trying to get them to all work without my noise fields would not have been fun. In fact, I have my doubts that we would have been able to finish all the features in new systems without some way of seeing what we were doing. Uh, I'll release noise tools for 2.0 when the expansion is released. So this is super cool uh, because it allows them to make new plants and new biomes much easier, much quicker. And also for the future, when 2.0 releases and Arendelle releases these tools publicly, then other modders will be able to also make new planets and stuff, which is you know much easier, which is really, really nice. Uh, now we come down to this section here uh, by Guinness, and this is the part I'm going to skip. This is an absolutely no... <laughs> Uh, no, no, no negativity towards uh, Guinness at all. But this is just so, so technical. I, I truly like don't even understand most of this. Uh, and even like when I asked ChatGPT to summarize it, I don't even understand the summarization. So, <laughs> uh, if this is your thing, if you're really into this technical stuff, um, definitely give this a read. I think I did like just briefly, uh, just kind of skim through it on my own. Um, and while I didn't understand it, I can see where if you did, this would be really interesting. It's a really good write up here. Uh, so if you'd want to see all the behind the scenes stuff for this and how it's, uh, you know, introduced in, in, in works with C++, definitely give this a read. Uh, you know, that's your thing. Absolutely. I think you'll find it really interesting and enjoy it. For me, I, I it's way beyond me. I don't understand it at all. But <laughs> uh, basically, we go down near the end here. So further work, uh, my journey in this, I think it's still by uh, Guinness. My, my journey to improve match generation doesn't end uh, there which, with all they just discussed. The introduction of prototype defined noise functions meant that AST contained uh, constants which don't have any effect on the result and were quite frequent. Uh, so again, like I don't even understand any of this already. Um, but essentially, Continuous improvements and optimizations, including partial constant folding and efficient use of base noise, um, it, it contributes to faster chunk generation. And then the results show significant speed improvements in chunk generation compared to previous versions. So the conclusion of results here, and this is like really, really impressive. Uh, Around 90% of the noise expression engine for map generation was rewritten, resulting in a faster, more maintainable system. The improvements include faster uh, initialization of prototypes, quicker uh, compilation of noise programs, and a 25% increase in overall chunk generation speed. And like this is huge, they go a little more into detail here. So base game initializes prototype 7% faster and 80% less time is spent on noise expression prototypes. Novice noise programs are compiled 85% faster. Uh, thanks to procedures removal, there are uh, fewer noise operations reduced by quite a bit there and this brings us 25 percent faster chunk generation at 4.8 milliseconds to 3.58 and this is just overall a really big improvement now generally the system is considered over engineered but provides a solid foundation for future expansion projects so a ton of work went into this uh games mentioned somewhere in here oh right down here that uh yeah they estimated it it took four months working on this whole thing in C++ to, to rewrite the whole generation engine, which is so much work. So huge, uh, huge dedication by them, huge props to them. But uh, overall, this is really good because it just makes it more maintainable, more upgradable. It makes their map generation stuff, you know, better, faster, easier, uh, and more options going into the future, which is just never a bad thing. This is just all, all really good stuff. And this is part of what we love about the Factorio devs is they just improve all of their systems so much, always finding things to optimize and improve upon uh, where, where everything just gets better and better and better. So really huge there. And then lastly, we end uh, with this from Aaron Dell's time. It's that time of year again. Well done, you made it to the end, Mary Cogmas. Uh, so we get this really cool snowy thing here with a Christmas tree. And then there is actually a mod Aaron Dell just released today. Uh, where you can download it and get this Christmas tree. Uh, I'll throw a link to that either in the description or the comments, and uh, you can go ahead and grab that if you want. Now, there was a ton of speculation on like the snow. Are we getting a snow planet? I mean, generally, I kind of think we probably are. But that aside, I did see some people mentioning that like Arendelle, like hand 
created and drew in the snow or something. So that may not specifically be an indication, uh, but generally I think we're just getting a cold snow plant anyway. Uh, and there were some comments of like, uh, this is a new building, but I think this is just the uh, foundry, I think. Well, not I think, now that I look at it close, this is definitely the foundry, because I very much recognize this part here. Uh, this is the foundry that, that they showed in a previous Friday fax, obviously snowy and not on necessarily, it's like frozen. Uh, so, you know, this is just Christmas winter themed. Um, this does introduce a potential um, theory that maybe on one of the planets your factory does kind of freeze over and it becomes almost like a uh, uh, frost, uh, shoot, what's the game? Frost Punk, is it? I think is the game name where, where like the whole thing's frozen, you have to keep everything warm. Uh, you know, maybe there's some sort of aspect with that on a new planet. Uh, again, that could have absolutely nothing to do with this, but if we really want to kind of speculate, uh, that maybe is a possibility, could make things really interesting if you have to do some sort of like heating in your factory or, or something to keep it going. Uh, but, but overall, you know, this is probably one of the most technical Friday facts we've gotten. <laughs> uh, but generally I think it's really good stuff. Uh, better better map generation and and the ability for them to more easily make new planets and biomes is super super nice and then especially once uh arendelle's tools are released publicly with the 2.0 release it'll be really cool to see what modders do with it and and the other planets they add and such so that's going to do it for this one uh, i believe if i have my dates correct there should be one more friday facts before the end of the year uh assuming they don't skip one or something on the 29th uh, it should be the last Friday facts of the year. Um, so that should be really interesting. It'll be uh, fun to see what they end that on. And uh, I think after that, my plan, after we get that last one, I'm going to do a whole summarization video going over all of the features that we are getting in the expansion that have been covered in the Friday facts so far this year. Um, so that should be uh, pretty interesting to look at and see everything we've already heard about. And there's obviously a ton more to come, but that's going to do it for this one. Uh, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you did enjoy, uh, feel free to drop a like. And if you're new, welcome. And feel free to subscribe as well to keep up with future content. And uh, have a great holiday. And I will see you all next week. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.